Hi, my name is Jacob with Landmark Implement, and today we're going to talk about the pulsing modes of ExactApply and how to use your ExactApply system both in the monitor as well as on the nozzle body to optimize your system. When we talk about the pulsing modes of ExactApply, it's at first important to start with the A and the B concept of a nozzle body. So on our nozzle body, we have the A and the B side denoted by the letter on the inner side of the nozzle body itself. So here we have A, and on the flip side, we have our B. The front of the nozzle body is where this little uh, pipe is coming off the front here. The back is easy to identify by the connector. When we talk about the modes, the best way I found to describe this is to take apart the bottom of the turret so we can remove that retention clip and pull the turret off so we can see the ports uh, on the front and the back of this nozzle body. On the front of the nozzle body, you'll notice that these there are two ports and they're both open. So a product can flow out of either the top port or the bottom port. Versus on the back, the top port is the only port that has an opening and the bottom port is plugged. The bottom port on the front ties to the A side solenoid and the top port on both the front and the back tied to the B side. And this allows us to change our turret position as well as settings in our monitor to get to the various modes of exact apply. So we'll start with the, the simplest first. So we've got our, our turret on our nozzle body with a small turret on the front and a tall turret on the back. We can run in either A or B only mode where we can have our A solenoid pulsing and applying product out of the front port of the nozzle body with a short turret, or we can have the B on and pulsing and flowing product out of the back tall turret on the nozzle body. This allows you to then switch in the field between A and B with a press of a button on the armrest to let's say slip from a switch from a low drift tip on the front that you're doing your borders with to a uh, maybe higher flow tip or a larger droplet size tip on the back or switch easily between two different tip sizes to go between two different rates if you're if you're toggling rates as well so it allows a little bit of additional flexibility to be able to switch in a pulsing mode from the front or the back without getting out and having to turn the turret uh, or like with our conventional system that five position turret rotating it so allows for additional customization there we do recommend that when you set up your your turret uh, and, and put your tips on your turret, that you think about which two tips I might want to use on the same day or, or under common application scenarios to prevent having to get out and turn the turret. So we want to line up the tips across from one another that we're commonly going to use uh, together or close together. So while it is nice to be able to take this nozzle body off and kind of see how those ports align, we do also have a cheat sheet in our Gen 4 display that kind of helps show how the turret position uh, lines up with the various ports in the nozzle body uh, for, the, for the different modes that we have. If we take a look at our Gen 4 display, we go to Menu, Booms and Nozzles, and in the center of the page, you'll see the exact apply configuration page. We're going to go in here and go to our manual setup. Now, if we're wanting to pulse with exact apply, we need to make sure our pulsing mode is in auto. Once in auto, we can choose the target nozzle pressure we want the exact apply system to maintain. Go back under our manual setup here where we can see our turret. So you'll notice on this turret, you have a one through six spray tip denoted by the top of these little boxes. And then kind of in the center of this turret is think about our seals that we saw on the nozzle body, where we have two ports on the front, an A and a B, and a single port on the back for a B, where the A port is plugged. So this is the nice cheat sheet that's right in your Gen 4 monitor that can help you recall what we've talked about in this video and taking apart a nozzle body and looking about how product flows through the system. So in the case we have right now, we have an A, we're in A only mode 
And you'll notice that the only pipes that are connected are this A on the front and this B on the back. That's because we have a small or a short turret on the front and a tall turret on the back. So that back tall turret can reach that top B port. So you see that's where that pipe is connected. And the short turret on the front can only reach the A. You'll notice it can't reach that B port due to the height of that turret. If I switch between A and B only mode, you'll notice that our A is no longer lit green, but our B is. So this is a really easy way to tell, based on the mode selected, where chemical is gonna come out of the nozzle body when we turn our master spray on. If I switch back to A only mode, the B is grayed out and the A is back green. So a real easy way to tell if I click my master spray on, which tip am I gonna be spraying out of? If I rotate that turret and put a tall turret on the front and have a short turret on the back, you'll notice I automatically switch to combined A plus B mode. In combined A plus B mode, both the A and the B solenoid will pulse together at 30 hertz, but all product will flow out of the tall turret in the front. So you'll see we've got both the A and the B uh, pipes tied together. If we look at our nozzle body to physically see that, we pull our turret off. On the inside of that turret, you'll notice our, our tall turret positions have two ports versus our short turret positions only have the single port. If we put a tall turret, let's say the number six turret, on the front of the nozzle body, now we have the two openings from the A and the B feeding both to a single spray tip out of a tall turret. If we look at the back, you'll see we've got our plugged bottom hole and our top open on the top, but that open port on the top cannot reach that short turret, so no product is going to come out of that back spray tip when we spray. All the product will be feeding from both the A and the B, A and the B, to a single spray tip. This is commonly used when we're doing high rate fertilizer applications where we need to exceed um, the limits of a single Solenoid. So a single solenoid is only capable of doing 1.1 gallon per minute out of that tip versus if you're running two, that's how we get to our 2.2 gallon per minute that we can get to our, our higher fertilizer rates you know, in that 50, 60 gallon an acre range at a reasonable speed. So common practice to use a tall turret on the front with like a large size 20 uh, flood nozzle to do high rate fertilizer. The last pulsing mode we'll look at on a nozzle body is when you want to use two tips simultaneously and pulse. So we can enable what we call A plus B mode in the monitor when if we have a short turret on the front and a tall turret on the back. And this will allow the A solenoid to feed our front spray tip and the B solenoid to feed our back spray tip. When we're in A plus B, both turrets will spray simultaneously and this allows us to optimize coverage. One thing to note is when we're calculating our tip size, we wanna make sure that the two tips that we have selected here are appropriate for the rate that we're spraying at. So if in the, in the case of we would usually use a, a size eight tip or a size 10 tip, we would want to split that between the two tips. So whether that's a, a four and a six to get to a 10 or a four and a four to get to an eight, something to keep in mind is the spray tip size, the total size of them combined uh, needs, to, needs to fit the application rate and the speed that you're running. We have a later video where you can see spray tip selection using the calculator in the Gen 4 to help with this process. Another use case of running two tips at the same time is if we're doing high rate fertilizer, but we're doing it with a prescription. So let's say we wanna run a higher rate uh, or vary the rate uh, in the center of the pivot, but in the pivot corners, we're gonna run a lower rate uh, to save fertilizer costs. 
There, instead of using a single like size 20 uh, tip for high rate fertilizer in that A plus B combined with the tall turn on the front, we could re, you could you could run two smaller tips like two tens, and that just gives you flexibility when that prescription changes and the rate varies greatly across that field. Uh, we've we've had that running in the field with some customers, and it's worked really well for those variable rate fertilizer applications. So how to get to that in the Gen 4 display? If we look at our exact apply manual setup for our nozzle turret, and we've got a short in the front and a tall in the back, so we've got a one in the front, a four in the back. We can select our spray mode and go to the A plus B mode. And now you'll see we still have our pipes connected, A to the front, B to the back, but now both are lit green. And this is gonna tell us that product is gonna flow both out of the front A and the back B when we go to spray. So that's how you get into your A plus B mode for exact apply. That rounds out the exact apply pulsing modes. One other thing to talk about when we talk about pulsing, this pulsing mode selection, we talked earlier we want this in auto if we are wanting to pulse to let the machine determine how much to pulse each solenoid to hit the rate uh, that we've selected at the desired pressure. The other pulsing mode to consider is this fixed. The fixed pulsing mode allows us to manually enter the percentage that we want that nozzle body to be open. So in this case, I type 75%, which means 75% of the time in that 15 hertz pulsing, uh, the, the solenoid will be open allowing product out. So it's the duty cycle of that solenoid. If I were to change this down to 50, it would be open for 50% of the time during that, that uh, frequency pulsing. We have not found any great use of this in the field. This is a, a great thing to do when looking uh, for diagnostics, so trying to evaluate are all my nozzle bodies pulsing. You could just set a fixed pulsing rate, have in the yard, spray in water, and, and kind of check to make sure every nozzle body is working. Uh, the other use case here would be to look how a certain tip is going to pulse at a given duty cycle. So a common one to look at is what happens if I have a, a lower pulsing rate, so let's say 25%, does that spray tip hold pattern like I would like? So instead of having to get out in the field and actually spray chemical, we could be in the yard with water spraying uh, just stationary and manually fix the duty cycle to see how that spray tip's gonna perform. It's important that when we go back to spraying, we go to auto mode and let the sprayer determine the pulse percentage or the duty cycle uh, to achieve rate and maintain our target pressure. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video or reach out to your nearest landmark location. Uh, talk to your CTS, your service department for uh, any sort of configuration, optimization, or diagnostic needs.